Well, well, back to back mythologues, two days in a row. We're really on a roll now. And it's only going to get better. Uh, the Bifalog, that is, not society. It's headed in the opposite direction. <clears throat> Today is Entry 7, entitled Transportation. I'm sure by now you've noticed plenty of rusted automobiles and boxcars littering your world. Such is always the case after an apocalypse. I would just like to state that such relics of the old world must be dealt with, and dealt with quickly before you accidentally impale yourself on a jagged piece of metal. Clearing away these eyesores will help make your life safer, and will help you put the past to rest. Unfortunately, some people form attachments to their cars and find the, the rusted husk of their great-grandpappy's Mustang a hard thing to part with. My advice is this. I recommend that you wrench off a piece of that old machinery, uh, whichever fi you find uh, most sentimental, Put it in a box and haul the rest to a place far from home <clears throat> before it corrupts the water supply. Um, item one. Item one. Cars that look like this won't run. I have found from personal experience that if the engine is gone or about 80% of the heap is rusted clean, the poor thing will not start. I mean, you may as well have saddled a centipede. <clears throat> Even if you find one in slightly better condition, don't get your hopes up. These miserable contraptions are a thing of the past. Item 2. Trains are useless for transport. Why? Because they can only run on rails. The simple fact is that the tracks will be beneath the sands, and trains without tracks can't be moved easily. Nor can they be expected in such a condition to move you. However, if someone is selling land by the local train station, then I say, snatch up one of these fine establishments. These, uh, prime boxcars. They will be excellent real estate in any post-apocalyptic world. And, um, if, uh, if you happen to see them, then definitely go for it. I, I would, uh, I wouldn't pay more than three chickens for it. But, um, plumbing and whatnot for the more extreme buyer... Uh, shouldn't be a problem to, uh, <clears throat> they're fixer-uppers. I mean, what can I say? Item three, with cars and trains out of the picture, you may be wondering how are you are going to get around. The Bifflog, fortunately, has an answer to this one, too. These are feet. Some of you may have forgotten about them. If they're buried under layers of fat, then uh, don't stress out. Obesity will be easily remedied by your now much healthier diet and inevitable additional exercise. Now, to the oversized blimps in the audience, there's no easy way to put this. Don't hoard Krispy Kremes. If you do, your feet may never reappear. And trust me, they're much more valuable than a Big Mac. In fact, if you happen to have a Big Mac in front of you right now that you are inhaling, put it down. Put it down right now. Throw it away. Don't put it on the compost heap. It'll only corrupt your garden. But I say put it down. This is Biff Bugelberg telling you this. This is your conscience. This is, this is common sense. This is the future. Back to the feet. The feet are located at the ends of the lower limbs. And, um, I mean, in case some of you are expecting them to be elsewhere, that's where they are located. <clears throat> and they are used for walking, which is a method of self-mobility, which I will demonstrate uh, right here in a short tutorial package which I have put together myself. Let's roll that tape, shall we? Walking. The process begins by lifting the right or left leg and foot, whichever is preferred, and dragging it to a position roughly a yard or so ahead of the other. A whole yard? Well, if I said move your foot one foot past the other foot, that would just confuse them. <clears throat> yes, uh, drag the foot a yard past the other, which remains stationary, and drop it. This is, of course, assuming you started from a standing position. We will cover the full flow of motion from a sitting position straight into walking in a more advanced lecture once you have become a more competent user of the feet. Anyway... 
Next, while maintaining balance, lift the secondary limb, gain forward momentum, and sweep past the first limb, landing it another yard or so in front. Then, repeat the process. Yes, the days when a sizable carcass could be toted around by machinery are no more. If you can bring your minds to bear with that, then you should be looking forward to the day when once again you have the power to move yourselves manually. Item 4. Once you have regained the feet, don't expect them to be able to do everything. I mean, there's some feats that the feet simply cannot accomplish. <laughs> For long treks, you should use a horse. These animals don't require gas to run, and for those of you feeling lonely, the horse is a perfect companion. They are far more valuable than some dumb car, in my opinion. That's all for today, folks. As always, I'm Biff Bugelberg, lending you the keys to societal reconstruction, one step at a time. Put down the Big Mac.